As a parent, I want to protect children. Thank you. I think she had a lived experience of how she was struggling living that life. She felt compelled to talk about it. Tonight on Panorama, the Princess of Wales. Especially in that Panorama interview, I think we all now know that she was deceived into giving the interview. But at the same time, she spoke the truth of her experience. How do you feel about the way the press behaves towards you now? I still to this day find the interest daunting and phenomenal because I actually don't like being the centre of attention. When I have my public duties, I understand that when I get out of the car, I'm being photographed. But actually, it's now when I go out of my door, my front door, I'm being photographed. I never know where a lens is going to be. My mum was harassed throughout her life with my dad. But after they separated, the harassment went to new levels. It is announced from Buckingham Palace that with regret, the Prince and Princess of Wales have decided to separate. All right, I'll go first on this one. This is what true sincerity looks like. This is what Megan's trying to be and trying to portray or trying to, to pull off and it's not working because this is what it really looks like. If you ever wondered, this is what you're looking for. Um, she takes a deep breath before she answers and you can tell she's thinking about her answer. These aren't prepared answers. They may be, the idea, the concepts may be ready, but not like when Megan's look like, looks like she's acting in hers. These are our true expressions that we're seeing, especially around the worry and the concern, uh, ex expressions of concern and worry when she starts talking about the uh, photographers being outside the house, the paparazzi being outside the house. And then again, she pauses and she's thinking a little bit more. Her cadence is slow. Her, her vocal tone is strong. Her volume is strong. And her diction is great. It's really clear. But it's heartfelt. You can tell it's heartfelt coming out of there. The, the sound of it is, is a much rounder, t more sincere tone. Um, the confirmation nods on, I understand. She's letting you know she gets it. She understands what's happening here. She knows that comes as, as part of it. She, she gets that. Uh, then those multiple right shoulder shrugs, that's just letting it, that's just her not being sure again about those people being outside the door when she goes out, when she opens the door and when she opens the car door. Um, her blink rate only spikes on public duties. That's the only time I'm seeing it go almost a flutter. And, um, that, that lets us know that that when it comes to doing what she's supposed to be doing, that's stressful for her because she's not, again, she's pulled from obscurity. She wasn't pulled from a TV show. She's not an actress. She was just, you know, like normal people in Britain. That's why they loved her so much because she was one of them and she got in, you know, so that's, that's the, oh, is she not? No, tell me, Mark, what is it? Aristocracy. One what, of the what, richest what her, families in, in the country over the... Oh, you're kidding me. I always, yeah, 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 I always yeah. thought she was like some poor person that they brought in. No. no, 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 no oh, no. man. Okay, well, I bought totally Red, into red for the job. Okay, I didn't know that. Okay, that changes yeah. my story then. Yeah. All right, let's talk about this. No. So that, <laughs> but that's what it really looks like. That's what the sincerity really looks like, which is in there. That, help, that head tilt to the left, when she talks about it being daunting, I, th I think that shows that that the innocence of it, you know, like she she's really that really bothers her. That's really that really bothers her. And then she has that eye squint because she's getting serious and she's focusing in on that part she's talking about right there. And then uh, and she's not looking for pity. She's not looking for empathy. Nothing like that. None of this stuff is circling back to, to her as in I'm having the worst time. This is terrible. There's a secret. There's all this stuff never touches that uh, on any of that never brings any of that up. Um, there's none of that fake smiling like Megan's doing, uh, no, no poor pitiful me, none of that. Um, I think this is what Harry thinks he wants Megan to be is what we're seeing here. He wants his wife to be what his mother was, you know, I mean, talk about an, an Oedipal complex. I think he wants to sleep with Oedipus. I mean, it's what it looks like. It's going that deep, I think, at this point. So he wants his wife to be his mother. Like you said earlier, Mark, it's weird. It's kind of, it's odd. Chase, what do you got? 
Yeah, I think he would be Oedipus in this scenario. And it, it seems here that Harry is describing himself when he's describing his mother. He's saying there's a lived experience, struggling, uh, living that life, compelled to talk about it. She spoke the truth of her experience. Uh, people harassed her throughout her life. The harassment went to new levels. He's removed every possible positive element of his mother's life and is now forcing the lens of focus on negative and specifically precise aspects of her life that mirror his own. He's forcing the, the lens to look at aspects of his mother's life that mirror his own. And he's providing us reassurance for his present decisions. He's saying, this is what she did, and I'm doing this. So he's using that, I think, to provide us some kind of reassurance for his present decisions. That's all I got. Greg? Yeah, a couple of things. Yes, I agree. He doesn't talk much about his mother in the positive, but I also will tell you one of the most profound things in your life is when your mother passes because it's a different part of your life than you think it's going to be. And, and this is a kid. This is a 12-year-old kid. Single most important moment in his life, probably. Now, there could have been many others since then, but up to then, you would almost say, well, that that's it. So probably that leaves behind a negative emotion associated. I'm just going to go that way and say that happens when he's talking about his mother it's interesting because if you watch him he's contemplating and he's thinking through his answer he actually touches his chin he's illustrating what he's thinking he's pretty clear he lilts up at she felt compelled to talk about it and then you see a request for approval in his brow and i think it's because that's him conjecturing what she thought and he's just asking to connect with you on it um then the interesting piece is he said she was deceived and you see his narrowing of his eyes when he's talking about the, the interview. By the way, guys, we get requests for that one all the time. Maybe that's when we ought to do sometime, but it's old. The footage is old, but people love it. His eyes narrow, and we think that's disapproval. But the harassment went to new levels. Here's an interesting one. We talk to you all the time about people looking down to the right for emotion. And then what's happening in his case is his head is hanging down to the right. When people get to an emotional state, often you'll see that. Their head is hanging down to the right. But his eyes are down left as he's thinking about how to word this. So interesting because we see that fairly often in pre-confession as well. Person's head will be hanging and they'll be going to internal voice. So you can tell he this is feeling for him. Don't know exactly what he's feeling. Not important. But I do know there's feeling associated. With her, there's internal voice at when she starts talking about interest and then daunting as she moves into that. You hear internal voice. Her brow goes to concern. You see that knitting of the brow and her eyes, Scott, you hit it dead on her eyes, narrow first and then wide and big, almost like fear when she says, I don't know where they're going to be next. There's contempt in the left side of her face when she says, I'm going to go out when I go out my door. And then she does that trademark for her look under her brow and pull taffy to draw the person in to make a connection. I think part of the reason, you know, when we think about her, about her as a person it's that appeal to others and that trying to connect and listening that probably did more good than anything else that we don't see the same way in these two. He's sending this message. And to me, it looks like a genuine message of frustration with where things went. Mark, what do you got? Yeah. So uh, deceived. And, and I think we do, Greg, get that narrowing of the eyes. We get a top lip tightening as well. I think it's anger and, and anger's a, an offensive move. I mean, it's there to to show people off the territory, move them away. Once again, protective of his mother, just like he's saying he is protective of his family. I think for him, they're potentially very much the same thing. If you protect your family, you're protecting your mother at the same time. Um, daunting and phenomenal. Uh, and yes, there was nothing more phenomenal than Diana, an absolute phenomenon that the world hadn't ever seen before. She says public duties. And then there's the differentiation between that and out of my front door. And you're right, Greg, contempt. She's trying to make a very big differentiation as to where she is, um, what what is her public persona and what is her 
private life as well. And she feels if she leaves a certain door, that's private. And if she comes out a different door, that's uh, that's public. She's saying one is fair game, the other isn't fair game. Later on in this documentary, um, uh, Harry will differentiate as to what he feels is fair game that you're born into or you maybe marry into and what he thinks is absolutely unfair and and that's why it's 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 a bigger documentary because he, the documentary makers have wanted here to make a documentary not only about them but about Britain in general the idea of Britain and the institution of Britain and the idea of institutional racism that that of course Britain and the and the newspapers have a history of racism. Of course we do. Of course we do. You know who would think who would think anybody anything else? Well, some might, uh, some may not. But uh, but that's really the differentiator that he's going to make later on. She's making this differentiator of one is fair game, but my private life isn't. My kids aren't. Interesting. Let's see where this goes. As a parent, I want to protect children. Thank you. I think she had a lived experience of how she was struggling living that life. She felt compelled to talk about it. Tonight on Panorama, the Princess of Wales. Especially in that Panorama interview, I think we all now know that she was deceived into giving the interview. But at the same time, she spoke the truth of her experience. How do you feel about the way the press behaves towards you now? I still to this day find the interest daunting and phenomenal because I actually don't like being the centre of attention. When I have my public duties, I understand that when I get out of the car, I'm being photographed. But actually, it's now when I go out of my door, my front door, I'm being photographed. I never know where a lens is going to be. My mum was harassed throughout her life with my dad. But after they separated, the harassment went to new levels. It is announced from Buckingham Palace that with regret, the Prince and Princess of Wales have decided to separate. If you like this video, get the full body language breakdown and analysis on our main channel by clicking this video right here.